In the field of cybersecurity, there are many, many, many tools, and I'm sure that you can agree on that as well. Wouldn't it be nice to have a consolidated environment that it contains all the tools required for you to perform your task? Imagine how much time that would save. Wouldn't that be great? The good news is that that exists. For example, for malware analysis, you have Flare VM and Remnux. For pen testing, you have Kali Linux. And in this video, I want to introduce you three tools that you can use for DFIR to help you save time so you can focus on performing your task. Number one is SIFT Workstation. SIFT was created by Rob Lee over at SANS Institute back in 2007. Since then, him and his team continuously worked on SIFT Workstation to become what it is today. And it's quite popular. I personally tend to use SIFT Workstation quite often when it comes to DFIR work because all of the tools are there ready to go. From the site itself, SIFT Workstation is a collection of free and open source incident response and forensic tools. There are multiple ways to get started with SIFT Workstation. However, the one that I typically use is to download their VM appliance. The other ways are to install SIFT Workstation directly on top of Ubuntu or on WSL, Windows Subsystem for Linux. In this video, we'll go with option number one, which is downloading their SIFT Workstation VM appliance. Once we finish downloading the VM appliance, run a file hash to ensure it matches what is presented on the site. And also do keep in mind of its username and password as well. Once you finish downloading the SIFT Workstation, we want to now make sure that the hash matches what it says on the site. So we'll open up PowerShell and type in get file hash and point it over to your SIFT workstation. We want to make sure that it matches the SHA-256 hash, the one starting in 27F and ending in D74. Now that the hash has been calculated, we take a look at the beginning, 27F, and then the ending, D74. Perfect. Now the next step is to import our OVA file. Once we finish importing our OVA file and start up the VM, we should be presented with this login screen. We click on it and if you forget the password, again, it is located on the site itself. So the login is sans forensics and the password is forensics. I'll go ahead and type in forensics and hit enter. Now, just as an FYI, I am using VMware, and if you are using VirtualBox, there are a couple steps that you might need to do in order to get SIFT up and running for you. In the past, when I was using VirtualBox, it provided me with a lot of errors, which is why I shifted over to VMware. So this is SIFT Workstation. On the desktop itself, you got a lot of posters that can help you during your analysis as well as mount points and cases for the directories that they've created so you can stay organized. If you wanna play around with SIFT Workstation and learn more about it, I highly encourage you visit their site and look at their documentation. On the site itself, if you scroll down, you'll see some of the tools and capabilities that SIFT offers. And at the bottom, you got your how-tos and resources as well. Number two, Sarugi. Sarugi is a customized Linux distribution that contains a collection of tools to assist you in your DFIR tasks. Sarugi is free, which is nice. However, like most tools, you'll need to have basic Linux skills. From their site, they offer three set of tools, Sarugi Lab, Sarugi Acquire, and Bento. Acquire is used for live acquisitions, whereas Bento is used as a portable toolkit to assist in live DFIR activities. In this video, we'll focus on Surugi Linux, AKA Surugi Lab. Under the Surugi Linux documentation, it provides us with a list of tools under each version. As we can see, it provides a huge listing of tools that are already installed and ready to go. To get started with the installation, we'll head over to the downloads page and I highly encourage you to read it over. Once you're done reading, we'll head over to Mirror One and begin downloading our Surugi Linux OVA. Once the download is finished, like everything else, we'll verify the hash to ensure it has not been tampered with. Just like what we did with SIFT Workstation, we want to compare the hash to make sure nothing was tampered with. 
do keep in mind of the algorithm. It is SHA-512. So we'll open up PowerShell. And the reason why I say keep in mind of the algorithm is because by default, PowerShell, when you run a get file hash, it'll do SHA-256. What that means is when we type in get file hash, we now have to specify the algorithm and say SHA-512 and point that over to your Surugi OV8. Now that the hash had finished calculating, we can compare the two. We have 0A79DB. On the second one here, we have 0A79DB. Perfect. Now I do know we cannot see the end of it. That is simply because it is just way too long. If we wanted to see the entire thing, we can pipe it into FL. Now that that's done, you can see the ending of the file hash. 6, 4, 8. And if, again, if we compare at the top, we have 6, 4, 8. So let's go ahead and double click our OVA file next. Once double clicked, it'll ask if you want to import the virtual machine. And yes, we do. So we'll accept the terms and agreements and hit next. Next, you want to enter in a name for the new virtual machine along with the storage path for your new virtual machine. Now you may get an import failed error, but that's okay. You can hit retry. After successfully importing Surugi and booting it up, this is it. Surugi has a bunch of pre-installed applications for you for you to test out. At the top left-hand corner, you can click on applications and go into Surugi. From there, you can look at what kind of applications you might want to test. For example, if I wanted to look at memory forensics or even if I wanted to perform network analysis, this is where I would go. Pretty cool stuff overall. And if you want to learn more, again, they have a lot of stuff on their documentation that is listed on their site. Number three, CSI Linux. The last one I'll introduce is CSI Linux which is another customized distribution offering a collection of tools to assist in your DFIR activities. One thing to note about CSI Linux is that it comes with its own Elk instance along with Zeek. From their frequently asked questions, CSI Linux serves as an open source theme park for the cybersecurity industry, offering a comprehensive suite of tools for investigations, analysis, and response. The folks over at CSI Linux has an academy section where you can enroll in training and upskill to better understand how you can take advantage of this distribution. To get started, we'll head over to the downloads page. They provide us with various different options to get started, such as VirtualBox, VMware, KVM, or even a bootable image. In our case, we'll go with VirtualBox and I'll be selecting Direct download. Once that is downloaded, you guessed it. Verify the hash to make sure that it had not been tampered with. Let's take note of the username and password as well, as we'll need that to log in. Now that CSI Linux had finished downloading, we need to verify the MD5 hash. To do that, we'll open up PowerShell and type in get file hash. Now, because it is MD5 that we're comparing against, we do need to specify the algorithm. Now, because I can't spell, I'll type in dash algo and hit tab for auto completion. Now I'll type in MD5 to specify that I want MD5. And I'll point it over to our CSI Linux file and hit enter. Once it's done calculating, take a look at the hash 58D, 58D, perfect, ending in 4C1, ending in 4C1. Awesome. It matches. Now we'll go ahead and extract our CSI Linux and start importing it over to our virtual box. We'll head over to the directory where we extracted CSI Linux and we'll double click on the file with the file extension VBox. Once you have double clicked it, it should automatically show up in your virtual box. Now we'll click on start. After a couple minutes, you should be presented with the login screen. The username is CSI and the password is CSI as well. This is CSI Linux. It has a lot of tools that are already built in for you that is ready to go. For example, you have Multigo, Hunchly, Network Miner, Wireshark, even Autopsy and Ida. 
and a lot of other tools as well that if you want to learn more about, you can definitely go on their site and read about their documentation. At the end of the day, these are just collections of tools and you will need to validate and verify each tool that you use, especially in DFIR. To avoid getting overwhelmed with the amount of tools available to you, make sure to ask the following question before you begin your analysis. What am I trying to achieve or prove? This will help you in your direction. I can't stress this enough. Make sure you validate and verify each tool that you choose to use because one tool may output something differently than another. That is it for the video. And if you enjoyed it, let me know by hitting that like button and subscribe if you want to. Remember to stay curious and do things differently.